ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Coming up today, we're going to take a deep look at how Ethiopia's landlocked status affects far more than trade and transport. From economic development to cybersecurity and even cyber sovereignty, we're going to be uncovering a host of issues shaping Ethiopia's future. And today on the show, we're going to be talking about something perhaps you might not usually connect, how being landlocked affect a country's cybersecurity and cyber sovereignty. And I'm so honored to be joined here in the studio by Dr. Lil Tamrat, he's a cybersecurity expert and international affairs consultant. I am your host, Shifa Raulako. Do you still us? <music> Dr. Lul, thank you so much. It's good to see you again and welcome to the studio. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me again. Yes, sir. So how does a country's reliance on neighboring countries for internet access possibly affect the country's vulnerability to diverse issues such as cybersecurity, attacks, and mm. potential outages in the country? Yeah, um, I would say most people, for most people, this is not an obvious I issue. Uh, but uh, for example, um, if, you, if you imagine um, that your family's only water pipe is uh, passing through your neighbor's um, compound. So even if your house has a, uh, the best filter in the world, you are totally dependent. Uh, if the line is going through your neighbor's compound, uh, yeah. you are somehow uh, dependent. Uh, for example, if the neighbor closes the water, Mm. You, you won't get any water, yeah? And, uh, or if a bulldozer breaks uh, the, the pipeline, you will also have an issue. So th uh, this is actually the same situation Ethiopia has uh, because I think almost 100% uh, of the internet lines uh, come through Djibouti as far as I researched it. So, um, so the international internet uh, flows to only one country, mm. as I said, Djibouti. And um, so this could be an issue because um, if there's, for example, a cable, uh, an earthquake, or even an internal issue in Djibouti, it could be uh, that the line is somehow disrupted. And um, so um, this, this makes Ethiopia uh, very dependent on only one country, and uh, it could also pose uh, actually cyber threats uh, for Ethiopia. So uh, this makes us very, very vulnerable um, if there's any problem in this foreign country, and in, in, in our case, it would be Djibouti. Mm. Uh, wow. So it's potentially risky and even dangerous, right? Exactly. Interesting. Along that line, uh, Dr. Lowell, could you also walk me through some of the ways, potential ways, yeah, in which limited, mm -hmm. as you know, physical infrastructure routes, such as fibers, mm -hmm. going through a limited or a couple of borders could potentially create a single point of failure exactly. for a country, exactly. yeah, you know, which in turn increases the nation's vulnerability to diverse uh, cybersecurity risks and attacks. Absolutely, Mr. Schifferow. Absolutely, uh, this is a good observation. Um, uh, when uh, almost 98% uh, of our traffic travels um, through one or two uh, fiber lines, uh, this would become somehow this is somehow a risk because um, um, we saw this. Uh, I think in 2020. In 2023, there was, I think, uh, Red Sea cables were somehow uh, damaged. Um, Kenya, since it's a coastal country, uh, was back, I think, within 48 hours, uh, was back connected to the internet. Because it had uh, access to the sea, to right? To sea, exactly. And uh, I think Ethiopia stayed uh, dark for days. So th this is a good example yeah. uh, what this landlocked status actually uh, uh, how th does it um, affect, uh, I think, in a very crucial way, the internet connection of mm. Ethiopia. Yeah? So um, it could be only one accident. If, if you only have one or two lines, fiber lines, one ac accident is enough uh, to uh, turn the whole country dark, uh, actually. So yeah. um, this is very crucial, uh, I think, yes. Yeah. Let's also talk about uh, geopolitical dependence on some of the transit countries. Uh, the countries 
through which the fibers come. So in this regard, does from your observations and of course as, a, as an expert, as yes. a security, cybersecurity expert from your observations, does geopolitical dependence on transit countries for digital connectivity give these countries leverage in order to potentially monitor or even disrupt a landlocked states data traffic? Uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, we must say it openly and uh, also in a, in a calm tone. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, this could be risky, uh, you know, in uh, some way. Of course. Yeah. Uh, whoever controls um, uh, your digital front door, yeah, this, this is some kind of a di digital front door, uh, uh, he has the power over you. Uh, this is this is a technical fact. Yeah, uh, they may never use this power, of course. This is also an issue of trust. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but the capability is there uh, that uh, somehow um, he can uh, watch, do surveillance. He can uh, slow down your uh, your internet. Uh, uh, he can even stop your traffic. And uh, um, for example, Djib Djibouti. Uh, if we come again to the, to the example uh, of Djibouti. Djibouti hosts, I think, fünf, uh, uh, five uh, major military powers in their country. Yeah, yeah? the military bases. They are military bases. Yeah. All sitting meters away from Ethiopian cables. Whoa. Uh, I think uh, we, we, we already had a little taste of this issue during the Tigray war. Mm. Yeah. Uh, where we experience, I think, uh, some disturbances in this regard. Disruptions, yeah. yeah. And um, so this is not a, an issue of paranoia or, 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 or distrust. Uh, uh, um, this is geography uh, actually meeting um, geopolitics. So. In, in, our, in our modern world, in 2025, digital independence is actually uh, the same as political independence. You can't separate it. Mm. And um, I think the Ethiopian government is very aware of this, of course. Uh, but I think uh, the infrastructure needs to be somehow um, um, elevated or, or, or developed uh, more into this direction. We're not talking about mistrust, uh, specifically mistrust between Ethiopia and Djibouti because, as you know, Ethiopia and Djibouti have enjoyed long-standing cordial trust-based friendship. But we're talking about potential risk that leads to dangers simply because Ethiopia is a landlocked nation. So mm -hmm. let's also talk about the cost, mm -hmm. as you know, specifically the rising cost of uh, international bandwidth. So from this vantage point, how might the high cost of international bandwidth for landlocked states affect their mm -hmm. ability to invest in robust infra uh, cybersecurity infrastructure in their country? Yeah, um, and uh, this is um, uh, actually simple uh, mathematics um, uh, because uh, coastal countries, for example, uh, well, countries who lie on the coast, pay less than, I think, um, what I remember, less than $2, uh, two dollars per megabyte. Yeah? Uh, Ethiopia, uh, on the other hand, uh, still pays around Twenty-five dollars uh, to thirty-five dollars per megabyte. This is fifteen to thirty times more than oh. in the coastal country. So the difference is clearly visible. This right? is the difference is clearly visible, uh, and uh, that means more than I think uh, sixty percent of a certain um, budget, uh, uh, Ethiopian budget, is disappearing just to keep. Uh, the internet um, um, light on. Just to keep it the internet light on, uh, they pay or around 60%, uh, I think, of the ICT budget. Okay. Yeah? So uh, there's almost nothing left, actually, uh, when you pay this big amount of money uh, to buy, for example, modern firewalls or to uh, train cyber experts. We had this also in our la last discussion that this is also an issue. Yeah. Yeah? And uh, 
What is also very important is to build a national security operations center. Uh, uh, this money is actually not there because we pay that much money uh, only to, to keep the internet going. And um, yeah, this, so is this is the basics, right? This, no. this, this is the, the, the basics. So expensive bandwidth, um, as I said, um, uh, directly means weaker defenses because we, 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 do, we pay so much money uh, for this issue okay. uh, just to keep the internet going. So uh, the money we pay um, to, 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 to the neighbors actually to, to, to turn the internet light on um, um, is the money we, cannot, we, we, we actually cannot invest in order to protect ourselves. So this is also a very important issue, uh, this co um, uh, cost um, issue, yeah. because it has many implications for your defense situation uh, in terms of cyber security, because it's all connected to, to costs, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's also talk about global maritime cable network mm -hmm. and some issues yeah. in that connection. Yeah. So uh, from, from your experience, can a landlocked country's limited participation in global maritime cable networks place it at a disadvantage in detecting and also responding to and tackling or even recovering from cybersecurity shocks and dangers. Mm. Um, uh, as you may know, countries that touch the sea uh, are some kind, uh, some somehow full members uh, of the submarine cable clubs, so-called submarine cable clubs. Uh, for example, to Africa, one is to Africa or Peace or Seacom. Yeah? Uh, so these coastal countries, since they are m members of this, I would say, sea clubs, okay. uh, they get instantly uh, alerted, immediately alerted, uh, when something breaks, uh, and they can repair it within hours. Yeah. Okay. So um, they get instant alerts and they can immediately act on it. Um, Ethiopia, or, or we as Ethiopians, we are only customers uh, we, because we are a landlocked country. Mm. We are not member of, of these clubs and we don't get these alerts immediately. So uh, when, when, for example, um, uh, the two Africa cable <coughs> broke. I think in 2000, this is also club to Africa, yeah, uh, broke in 2024. Uh, coastal relations um, were fixed within hours. I think Ethiopia, uh, uh, the fixing, uh, it, it lasted almost two weeks. And okay. uh, so the, the Ethiopia was without internet access. Yeah, uh, so, uh, and this uh, means in cybersecurity, actually, uh, Minutes matter. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, uh, so being outside the room um, where decisions are made uh, means slower detection actually for Ethiopia, slower detection of uh, cyber issues and also slower response of course and, uh, and slower recovery. And uh, um, so um, this is also um, n not tolerable I think uh, in terms of cyber security. Yes. Um, but, but there are solutions of course. Uh, May we come to it later. Yeah. Yes, sir. How does being landlocked um, affect a country's cybersecurity strategy, especially in establishing redundant, secure yeah. um, digital corridors? Mm -hmm. As you know, despite the yes. fact that there yeah. are some geographic constraints. Uh, good thought, good thought. Um, uh, from uh, there, actually, uh, there's a strategy, of, of course, uh, you need to follow uh, as a government. Uh, um, and um, um, I somehow um, detected five pillars, um, uh, five uh, Ethiopian pillars. Um, the first pillar uh, would be uh, to build, uh, at least uh, as you already indicated, uh, free independent routes. For the, uh, for, for the internet. Uh, uh, it can't be that we are only dependent uh, on one country, which is Djibouti in okay. this case. So uh, free independent routes means from the north, from the east, and from the south. Yeah? So uh, no single summer, uh, no single country uh, should uh, in the future uh, somehow uh, hold uh, uh, our keys. The, this is not tolerable, that only one country holds the keys. Yeah? So, um, 
this would be the first uh, pillar. As you said, we need some um, uh, diversification yes, yeah? options, in, in, in this term. Yeah. Then uh, the second point would be uh, uh, we need to create Ethiopian-owned landing stations. Landing stations means um, since we are a landlocked country, uh, as soon uh, the internet comes to our borders, there, the, the, this is like an entry port. This is an, uh, on the this is on the Ethiopian um, ground Sorry, okay. soil, yeah. yeah? And uh, for example, Se Semera or Mille, yeah, uh, whatever, uh, uh, and they need to be owned by Ethiopia, uh, so we can somehow screen what is coming. And these landing stations, uh, they call it landing stations okay. in, in cyber security. Uh, uh, they must be owned by Ethiopia, 100 percent. It mm. can't be that foreign providers or whatever own this. This is like an entry port, like a port. Okay. And uh, you need to check what is coming in and what is going out also. And uh, so um, this would be the second uh, pillar, uh, create Ethiopian-owned landing uh, stations. Yeah? Uh, the, th the third pillar would be uh, what I somehow um, mm -hmm. observed is uh, uh, we need to add satellite backup also. Uh, this would be, for example, Starlink, or uh, one web, or even our own constellation in the future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the sky becomes also some kind of an emergency road. Yeah. And um, also a very crucial pillar is uh, the topic of encryption, data encryption. Mm. So uh, we need to force end-to-end -end encryption of all critical traffic before it leaves Ethiopia. Yeah. Okay. So, if there are, for example, secret uh, f uh, sensitive data, well, as soon as it leaves, uh, as it leaves Ethiopia, it can't be that everybody has an easy job uh, just to get into 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 your f into your data. So, uh, this end-to-end -end encryption, as soon Ethiopia uh, 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 data leaving the borders, needs to be uh, encrypted. Last. Pillar, I would say this is a matter of international law and also a matter of, of treaty. So uh, we need Ethiopia, uh, I think, needs to lead Africa in writing a new treaty uh, that guarantees safe digital um, transit, actually, uh, mm. for landlocked nations. Mm. This, must, this must be okay. somehow codif codified. Yeah? There must be there must be legal code for the because we have this already for trans uh, tr we have this kind of treaties already for roads and rivers, why not for uh, digital traffic? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. for landlocked especially for landlocked traffic because this is crucial for landlocked mm. uh, countries. So yeah, actually um, um, we can build uh, secure digital corridors as you already mentioned uh, the same way with Ethiopian brains, uh, just uh, like Ethiopia uh, built the, uh, the, the dam. Yes. Yeah? Ethiopia can actually build uh, with Ethiopian brains, uh, Ethiopian will, and also uh, Ethiopian pride, because this is a matter of so sovereignty. And uh, the government and uh, all of us, uh, we need to see that political independence and sovereignty is only, is only uh, possible in, in, in our age, if you have digital uh, independence, right, right, and so yeah, this was this would be my take yes. on this issue. Yeah, Dr. Lule Tamrat, thank you so much for coming to our studio and giving us this idea. I really, really appreciate. Uh, it. thank you also, and see you next time. Yes, sir. Have thank a great you. day. Bye. Well, dear viewers, that's our show for today. As we have been following, being landlocked affects Ethiopia in more ways than we can normally understand economically, digitally, and everything in between. Thank you so much for having been with us so far, and we'll see you next time.